Packard Bell 98C39 uh, alignment. Actually, I'm going to check the alignment on this because this is a brand new old stock set. But I can't quite get the tint right and the color. It just doesn't look right. So I'm going to just check the alignment. This is a hybrid chassis. It uses about six tubes. The IF is solid state. The tuner still has two tubes in it. And I'm going to be using the 415 and the scope. And I'm really after chroma alignment here, but I'm going to, you have to check, you have to hook up all the bias points and the Uh, to the IF to basically you're gonna start with an IF check and then proceed on to the chroma take a look at the instructions here and the SAMs set the channel selector to the highest unused channel that's no problem we'll go with 13 because basically none of them are used anymore Connect a synchronized sweep voltage from the sweep generator to the horizontal input of the oscillator for horizontal deflection. I'm not going to do that. I just sync the scope up to the line because it's all basically on the 60 hertz line. Use only enough generator output to provide usable indication. Note, the response may vary slightly from what, what's shown. Connect a positive 1.1 volt bias supply to TP205. This white wire here is the AGC line for the IF, and it's this is TP205 back here. So we're going to connect a positive 1.1 volt supply to there, low side to ground. Connect a negative 15 volt bias supply to T or TP101 VHF tuner, low side to ground. Take a look up here. This white wire here is the where the negative 15 volts goes. Uh, disable horizontal sweep by opening the cathode jumper, uh, the horizontal output. Place normal service switch in service position. I am not going to do that because the 415, the BNK 415, automatically filters out horizontal sweep pulses. So disconnecting the horizontal sweep, which most of the instructions say to do is not necessary when using the BNK 415. Okay, so let me hook this bias stuff up and then we'll go from there. I have my two bias points hooked up here. And the way you set these is you just, the way I've been setting them is you just put your probe here and kind of adjust these bias supplies with your using your meter. Uh, they want negative 15 volts on the tuner. I can't put that low of a voltage on there. It just cuts off these solid state things are very touchy. So the next is uh, video IF alignment. Next step connect input to TP206 low side to ground. Okay, so TP206 is right right there. Here is we take our direct probe here. Connect that right on the TP206. These these are real nice when they have these uh, test points. Makes it real easy. 
Okay, sweep generator coupling through 0 .001 microfarad to TP1 or point U on VHF tuner low side to ground. This is the matching network that comes with the 415 and this is absolutely necessary to have this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it on 75 ohms and uh, I should not need the capacitor. This should do that. Let's take a look at how whacked out this is. Uh, first I've got my impedance matching here input through a .01 capacitor up to the tuner. I got my test point here bias test point here, all my bias points are all hooked up, chroma off, I got the function on IF, got this centered out sweep width, uh, let's see. got a little bit of a crusty knob here. So it wants, we want it to look like this where we have 44 in the middle of the hump, 47.25 and 41.25, so we want 44 in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch 44 on and off here. Let's see where that is. This is the 44. and you can see how far off this is. Now this is the chroma side right here. This is why the color is working but this over here, this could be why the picture quality of this thing is just generally poor and um, I might take a, a, a look at the circuitry before I start twisting on things because this thing is so far off it doesn't even seem to look right at all. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook on the, the chroma and take a look at what that looks like before I start tweaking with this. To check the chroma we have one more test point bias point which is a positive 1.1 volts and then we have the test point for our demodulator probe and we're supposed to have something that looks like this 4.08 on one side 3.08 on the other and the 3.58 in the middle. And here's what we got. And that one right there is the 3.58. So, way off. Now it says here that the 4.5 trap can seriously affect this. So the first thing we want to do is adjust the 4.5 trap which is easy to do with the NTSC generator and the tone it produces. Adjust T401 top and bottom and L404 for maximum gain and symmetry of response. Inability to obtain proper bandpass alignment may be due to misadjustment of 4.5 MHz trap. Adjust L212 for minimum at 4.5 MHz C figure 4. Oh. 4.5, is that even on this? Yeah, 4. Point. Yeah, this is a 4.5. Just for minimum, well, there's nothing there. Okay, so here's the L right here. Let's see if we can damage this. Turning that doesn't seem to affect anything. Okay, here's the transformer right here. It 
doesn't seem to do much either. I'm trying to adjust the 4.5 trap and it shows that here it shows the other one above it and this this thing doesn't look like it's put together right oh that's nice Someone's been in here or they put it together wrong at the factory. Just turning the 4.5 trap. This this is supposed to be up here like this. This thing's This thing is way off. I hooked this up to a spare chassis I had. A parts chassis I brought home. And take a look at how nice and wide that. And those are my markers that are on right there. Actually, this one's a little bit too wide. Take a look at this one. Definitely something wrong with this TV because I cannot adjust that any wider than that. Okay, this is where I got to when I've kind of just given up right here. Turn that down a little bit. This is the chroma band pass. This is over here to the right. I don't know if you can see that. That's the 4.5 megahertz. So I got the trap adjusted. Um, and these are the three chroma markers. This is the the oscillator frequency. And I got this so it stays about right through a, the range. I'm cranking it up there. You can see I crank it up and I finally just, that's about it. Okay. Keep cranking it up, cranking up, and then it just kind of mashes, it distorts out. So that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go turn the chroma off, flip this back over, go from the demodulator probe back to direct, and I'm going to yeah, I want that one on. I will just turn all of these on here. Okay. This is what I...
This is what I came up with for the IF band pass. Not great, but it's a hell of a lot better than what it was. Also, I'm driving this. I unplugged the, the tuner here. And I'm driving this straight into the IF, just like I did on the donor chassis. And I have my impedance set to 300 ohms. Take a look here if I switch this from 300 to uh, 75 ohms, how much this changes. Just moving this thing around changes this a little bit. So. I've got it pretty good here. You just gotta just kinda tweak on these coils and keep going back and forth and back and forth and around in circles and until you get this as close as you can. I'm gonna hook it back to the tuner and see what it looks like. So as a final check I'm using the channel 4 input from the 415 into the set and the thing set on 300 ohms here and this is what we got and it's still not right um, this should be much wider and this should slant down to here there shouldn't be this big gap here and if I turn this is the IF on the tuner. If I turn this right at the peak, there is 44 megahertz, which should be the center of the flat band pass. Which there is no flat band pass. There's something wrong here. You can see if I what this does turning the turning the uh, IF on the tuner. And I'm going to reach around the front and turn the fine tuning now. You can see the fine tuning does something a lot the same. The difference is the fine tuning, the way you, when you're using channel 4 or 10 on the 415. This is the sound marker right here. You adjust the fine tuning to get the sound marker into position. And you'll notice as I turn the fine tuning, see how it moves the whole it moves the whole thing including the fine tuning. So we want to put the fine tuning in that mark there. And the this coil does not move the sound marker. Okay, one last look at the chroma band pass. I'll put the chroma on, flip this, go to the demodulator probe. Okay. So there's our chroma band pass right there. And you know what? It doesn't look too bad. The whole thing doesn't look too bad. It's not right. Probably one of the transistors is a little leaky or there's a capacitor that's a little leaky, but I've got it aligned about as good as I care to.